Well, sitting here with you is a real pleasure and a privilege. Your work has had a profound impact on me and many of my friends, and it always brings me such comfort whenever I feel lost or worried about the state of the world. I always turn to the Gene Keys because I can feel there's just an inherent truth in there, and it, it always just feels like coming home. So you've created an astounding body of work, but you're best known for the Gene Keys, and I would love for you to start by telling us a little bit about yourself and how this beautiful creation came into existence. Yeah, sure. Um, every time I tell the story, it's always different. So, <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> As st stories always kind of gain polish over time. <laughs> um, no, in, in, it sort of came about in a um, mystical way, actually. Um, obviously, it involved a lot of hard work afterwards, but uh, I did have a, one of these sort of rare, fairly rare, I think, mystical experiences um, in my late twenties. Um, when uh, the sort of, I guess, the, I, sometimes I describe it as like Mozart, maybe how Mozart received a symphony, you know, um, like one big kind of download of the whole thing in one go, knowing the beginning, the middle and the end, but then, you know, it's difficult to explain that, but then all, yeah. all in my body, the whole thing in my body. Um, and then spending the rest of, well, for me, probably the rest of my life, unraveling that, unpacking that. So I call it a transmission because it was a, tra a wisdom transmission. Um, and I, I, I had some kind of deeper understandings when I studied some of the Tibetan teachings and they have a, a phenomenon, they describe this similar phenomenon, they call it a tama. Um, a tama is like a treasure, a wisdom treasure and um and and they're sort of the tamas were seeded many thousands of years ago by great teachers or their that's their teachings like so they kind of have they've been like waiting for the right time to awaken and then the, each tama has a teton which is a, a a treasure revealer that's the one who's destined to kind of unpack it and so i had that feeling when i sort of realized when i heard that story and uh, from the tibetans and I thought this that's exactly what this is. This is a term, this is like one of these treasures that's been waiting. And then I kind of arrived at a certain place in time and then it just opened in me. And um and but the 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 unique thing that's different about this transmission is that in my understanding is a collective transmission. So it is not just about me unpacking it, although I'm the sort of first turt on if you like the first one that's kind of opened it up um well in fact arguably i'm not the first you know there was a teacher before me called ra ru who mm -hmm. who actually opened up a system called human design mm -hmm. and then that was a similar trend that's the same transmission actually and then i studied with him and then took it even further so and there are others as well who are coming who have aspects of the tema as well um, so for me, it's like a whole symphony that that those who are very drawn to it probably have aspects to unpack themselves. Um, but for me, it was a very mystical experience, the, the basis of it, um, because I kind of saw the unraveling of it. But I didn't, you know, it, and now it's on a timer, you know, it's set on a timer. And it's very mysterious because it, certain people come into my life, like you're, you've come into my life, a new person. I don't know. I wonder, what, wonder whether you have something, you know, and what you might bring. And there are many. It's like tributaries flowing into this big river, and it has a life of its own. And um, I'm just responding to that um, jigsaw puzzle, and we're a big celestial jigsaw puzzle that's assembling itself through multiple strands, people, initiations, and it goes on revealing deeper and deeper layers. So in some respect, it's like a kind of big treasure box. And I, you know, every now and again, I put my hand into the treasure box and pull out another treasure, or someone else even puts their hand in and pulls out a treasure, and I look, oh wow, I didn't know that was in there. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's um, quite a mysterious thing. And then the other side of it is, it's a lot of work. It's been a lot of work, because I've had to write, I wrote the book, I evolved it, developed it, had a few false starts, kind of created, you know, worked with different people, 
um, a team grew and now it's like a whole body of teachings and as you know so it's continuing to grow absolutely and i remember once hearing you say that you spent many years contemplating the incarnation cross in human design and did that, i say that <laughs> yeah, i read that somewhere maybe you said it on a video that you were contemplating that for many years yes that's true which is so interesting Actually. because i um, found human design before i found the gene keys probably like a lot of people listening to this mm, yeah and the incarnation cross was always a great mystery to me and of mm. course if, if you look at your profile and you look at your incarnation cross it will be the same as your first four spheres in human mm. design mm. and so and then obviously your profile in human design is the same as the first four mm. lines and yeah so that always feels like a beautiful link between the two systems yeah it is and lots of people work with both systems yeah um and although i do caution people about if you're new just don't yeah. do both at the same yes. time <laughs> it'd yeah. be too overwhelming um but and they are very different yeah. you know but although many people now working with human design are, are, are kind of mutating the original knowledge because it's merged with the gene key. It's like two rivers coming together and then, and they've kind of both enrich in each other. Although they started off very different, you know. Yeah. yeah, that makes total sense. I like to see human design more as a sort of practical manual in how to live day to day and the gene keys more as deep contemplation on what's driving me in the first place. And, mm. and also- It's more that, spiritual, yes, basically. Yes, much more. Putting it simply. Yeah. And funnily enough, I had started off last year with a prayer to the universe that I wanted to meet my own shadow because I'd always been very scared of the word shadow, very mm. avoidant. Mm. And, and then your work came into my life and it's a really beautiful way to gently meet your shadow and to realize that we have nothing to fear in meeting no. our fears. No, no, it's Quite, very true. Yeah. It's, it's been wonderful. They're part of us, you know, they're they're a deep part of us and and uh, and my kind of, you know the mantra of the gene keys is like every shadow contains a gift you know and so it's the only way we really can open to to our tr kind of greatest potential and to the light if you like is is by going into the that sort of what looks like it's darkness but actually it isn't you know yeah. it only looks like it when you're when you don't go into it when you when you're keeping it at arm's length then it looks scary but the moment you open to it, you realize it isn't dark in there. There is trauma, but you don't need to be afraid of that trauma because that trauma is part of our transformational journey and it needs to move through us. So it needs to be felt, experienced, lived, honored, you know, that wounding that we all carry. And then it shifts. It's finite. That's one of the things I've learned. Like, and I didn't know that in the beginning. I, did, I mean, I didn't know, I knew it intellectually, but I didn't realize that our suffering was finite. You know, we have a finite store of it in our body because it feels infinite. You know, when you're suffering and then you go on, you know, it's like, oh God, and the relationship and then the health and then the whatever, and then someone dies and then you're just anxious or you're full of trauma and your body and you can't settle and you're restless or whatever, or depressed or whatever your suffering is, it feels when you're in it like you're never going to get through it it feels like it's endless but i I've, I've come to realize that it's finite <laughs> and that's not saying that mine has come to the end but it's like it's getting closer because you can feel the difference you can feel the lightening of your body as you do this work you know but it takes you know that's that's a lot of commitment it's, it takes some time doesn't it i mean you must know that absolutely yeah and i'd say i'm only at the beginning of my journey and i suppose then there's the other way of looking at the collective shadow which mm. i know you talk a lot about and holding and transmuting the collective suffering that i would imagine if you've lightened your load that you're able to embrace that in a, in a completely different way where you're like a vessel where it can just move through yeah i think so i think there's you know what the ancients call karma there's really two types of karma, but the but the one really, but the two. There's the personal individual karma that's connected to this life. You, maybe it's rooted in your past incarnations, but it's you know because that's what's driven it. But it's your personal, you know, karma that you've created. And 
So you have to work that off first. <laughs> you know, you have to process and transform that first. And as you get to the bottom of that, then you start taking on the deeper ancestral karma, you know, um, and that has a very different feel to it. Um, it's sort of, you kind of sense it's not yours. You sense it's not personal, um, but it's deep and painful. But, it, but because it doesn't feel like it, it's related to, the, to you, it's, there's, a, there's a kind of, it's almost easier to get through it in some way, but it's, but it's deep. And, but then it, the rewards of transforming that are, you know, you, your consciousness begins to awaken. You know, you begin to experience really kind of amazing states by doing that work. Yeah. And I think so, definitely in my community, we try to be tuned into that at all times, even just if we touch it and just dedicating yourself to holding that and, do, mm. and playing your part, it's, it really cultivates compassion towards your own shadow in turn. So I feel like it can be a nice dance that you use to strengthen your own resilience against your own personal shadow. Yeah, that's very, that's, that's very true. I think that's a wise thing, yeah, that you said. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers for that. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so just to revisit the gene keys. So could you tell us a little bit about the golden path and the three sequences? Yeah, um, basically, you know, the, the, where most people meet the gene keys is through their profiles, through their hologenetic profiles. And uh, I mean, I should say it's a synthesis. So that's not the only place that you could start. And as the synthesis is expanding, there'll be other points of entry for different people, depending on how they've come in. Um, but that's like the most used one currently because it's you've got this profile that relates to your birth time that um, gives you a, a journey basically and that journey is the journey of transformation and awakening and one way I sort of described the gene keys recently I said that, that you know to someone I said they're that they are the algorithms of awakening that's what they really are and they're individual to each person so it's a you're beginning a journey and you're already on the journey because probably if you've come to it, you're already spiritually done some work. And so you're kind of, you find yourself in the algorithms, but, and in, you know, you begin to recognize, ah, yeah, now that really makes sense because, you know, that shit, that's specific to me, but also it gives you this very specific shadow pattern, set of patterns for you to work on. Um, and when I say work on, I mean, Jinkies is the, the profile and working with the golden path. The golden path is the, is the name for these three sequences. Um, as you go into that, the main way of working with it is through the art of contemplation. And, you know, so I need to describe that in a, I'll do that in a minute, like yes, what I please. mean by that. But um, essentially these path, these three journeys are like a, a journey that you take. It's a, it's a self, I call it a journey of self-illumination because it's a personal journey. You can take it with others. You can take it at the same time as others mm -hmm. in company, or you can do it alone, but it's something that unfolds uniquely inside you through your contemplation. And the first level is called the activation sequence. And that relates to our purpose, really. What's your highest purpose? What's your, your deep purpose for being here? Um, and quite surprising when you really do contact what is my deepest purpose because your deepest purpose is never like something you're here to do actually it's someone you're here to be it's a quality of presence that you are here to radiate and there are words for all these in the gene keys as you know like because this it's a it's a it's a technology of words um, but the words are frequencies they're like colors you know or tones and so as you enter into this world of the, of the Gene Keys words, you're entering into a frequency realm. They're not just words because the, the books that I've written are not just, they're not, they're not manuals, you know, they're books to contemplate. So you read a couple of sentences and then you let them kind of sink in. And then maybe you share them with someone and you, collectively contemplate them and that's how it's a, you're entering into a garden really or a wilderness or a forest or a jungle 
And these are the maps that take you through the inner territory. And there are layers that open and layer behind a layer behind another layer. But in one sense, even though you go through these three sequences, they're all one thing. They're all inside each other, like an onion, you know, peeling an onion. So in a way, there's only one sphere, you know, because you have these spheres that you walk through like stepping stones. Um, but each, each one contains a deeper layer. And the sequence through them is really critical, is really key, because we awaken in a sequence. You know, that's how, it, that's how our DNA is built everything and that's how evolution works it always works in sequences in stages in iterations in initiations you know so revelations you know they're all like you do the work you can you explore the shadow you unpick it you unpack it you work it you transform it it, it shows up in your life you have a relationship with it you absorb it you transform it and then it releases you and then you're like oh and it, there's more light in your life and, and your outer life changes to adjust. Yeah. And then you integrate and there's always a pause and then you begin another level and you're at another level of shadow. You're like, oh, here we go again, back down the wormhole. And it's deeper and it's thicker and it's you know, more challenging, but then you have more light to tackle it. You, know, you have more weaponry and a sword and a shield and in you go to, to kind of take on the next layer. And that's the whole story of the golden path. So the, that the first stage is purpose. The second is about love and relationships and heart, the heart and our wounding of our childhood. And then the third is prosperity, which, you know, so you have these three layers, but they're all one layer, but the sequence is key. So it's purpose, partnerships, prosperity. And that is the order of awakening. You can't jump or bypass that order. You, in order to kind of do this, the heart work, you have to have an understanding of your purpose. Because if you don't have that core stability in you of like, this is me, mm -hmm. how can you interact in a relationship from a place of independence and health? And, you know, because you're just, you don't have that grounding to do the heart work. So then you do the heart work from that place of grounding. And then, then because the, the heart works is the, is the kind of tenderest, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the most vulnerable, but the most precious as well. And that's called the Venus sequence, you know. And when I'm talking about these things, I'm talking like years, really. Yeah. You know, to really do this work, it's years. It's like it, you can put it down and stuff, but it'll keep coming back because the sequences are embedded in you. So it doesn't matter which teaching you use or which teacher you follow, the same patterns keep coming back. <laughs> So Gene Keys is just a map of those patterns. So it's very handy. It, it, can, it can help us integrate more quickly than many things. And then the third phase is prosperity. And prosperity really is only, you know, true prosperity can only flower after the heart begins to open. Otherwise, it's not real prosperity. It's just wealth, maybe. Um, and it's in a way why many people who do spiritual work don't manage to sort out the their finances and their flow yet because there's not enough of the relationship work that's been done you know it's been skipped over you know and if you skip over that then you can't attain the true prosperity because you because your heart is not able to stay permanently open you might think it is but you'll you will have like self-imposed boundaries maybe through your mind or patterns that you haven't yet owned that are actually keeping you from trusting trusting yes. basically yeah. trusting yourself trusting others you know so yeah there's a lot of forgiveness that has to take place before the prosperity arrives and and literally it, it just arrives because if you do the heart work it just arrives it starts arriving and you're just looking at the final sequence the pearl sequence and you're going well i don't even need to do this bit it's happening because that's what happens you're just, it's almost like you're just looking in the mirror and going well there might be a few keys in there for me to refine my process around money and wealth and because it's not just money it's health as well it's it's prospering on all levels 
yeah so that's the golden path journey and you know really good one to get stuck into and if that sounds overwhelming then you just you, i suppose the other thing if someone's listening to this and they're new is it and you can say that you can share this like it's laid out very simply in steps Absolutely. so you don't get overwhelmed by the whole mountain you're just like dealing with this step here now um, and then when you're ready with that step you move to the next step yes and um that is what attracted me so much to the gene keys and what i always tell people because a lot of us listening to this and in this field feel already very overwhelmed with all the systems and learnings that you know we're all curious people but what I always say to people is the Gene Keys takes up so little bandwidth because it's about learning the art of contemplation, which you're the, the master at. And I learned that from you. It's, and so I always say to people, you just you open the book and you just start to read and you just allow it to unfold. And it will and can take years. But it's just that learning the art of contemplation has been really life changing for me. So I, I always tell people that with the Gene Keys, it's a living transmission. Just by beginning to, to read the first words, you're awakening, you're catalyzing a process within you. And, and this whole notion of having everything locked inside of us that slowly unfolds, I again learned from the Gene Keys. I always thought I had to look outside of myself for answers. And you also said once that you'd initially thought that the Gene Keys would be um, the kind of thing where you have your profile read by somebody else and then you quickly realize no this has to be a path of self-illumination because only we understand those specific shadow patterns and how they play out for us only we can work that out yeah you can't contemplate for someone else can you <laughs> <laughs> no you can't and also in, like you you have a book about contemplation which I'm looking forward to that being available yeah, again. I, it, it, I think it is now, actually. And it, okay. I'll make sure that it is after this. Yes, because I think it's a life-changing practice anyway to learn how to spend more time contemplating. You naturally slow down. You begin to enjoy life. You see things happening around you. And, it's, and by contemplating an idea or a concept that initially is just you can grasp it mentally, it allows you to begin to embody that, which is the whole point yeah. of the Gene Keys. Totally. And actually, this is, you're right, this is a standalone um, technique, this little book. And, um, you know, I say that there is no problem or challenge that exists that cannot be resolved through the art of contemplation. Not one. Nothing. So anything you have, any question about your life, it, it can be resolved by the art of contemplation if you learn how to do it. Because the answer is always inside you. And contemplation isn't, you know, it's like it may begin with thinking, but then it goes deeper and deeper and deeper until the mystery of it starts to kind of reveal itself through you. <clears throat> and all it really takes is a kind of a, a blend of constancy and playfulness, you know, so you have to stay with it. So if you have a question about your life and anyone could do this, by the way, listening to this now, mm. whatever the question is, you know, it might be like, how do I get past my kind of tendency to fall into states of depression, you know, or anxiety? How do I get past that? That's a really good human question. Many people have that. Um, you begin by just contemplating it, you know, so you give it some space. So when you're in, when you next feel it, instead of like trying to rush and stop it, pause that's the back foundation of contemplation pausing you pause and you give it a little breath you give it some breathe a breather you give it some space you're generous and towards yourself and you're gentle you know those are things you're gentle and you're generous so you give it some time and you just breathe and you just go right well, instead of me rushing now to try and stop this in whatever way you know whether it's like put on the tv or you know, some way of distracting myself or eating or whatever it is, instead of doing that, just give yourself a moment of pause to be in the pattern. Simple as that. And, it, and to be in the discomfort of the pattern, right? And that is the beginning of your contemplation because then you're, you're actually looking into the pattern instead of avoiding it. And the moment you begin to look into it, even though it's, it's very uncomfortable at the beginning, it will become easier as you go on 
and then you you can begin to actually trust it you know you can realize that actually this is something inside me for a reason this is one of those shadows right and somewhere in this coal mine is a diamond and if you make the commitment to just stay with it sooner or later the first diamond will appear you know you'll find a diamond some little diamond some little insight and it may not even come from you sitting there it might just come from the outside from someone something an event something and it just gives you this little just because you've given yourself permission to feel it then you're opening up you're saying to the universe and to yourself i'm going to trust this even just a little bit i'm going to open the door just a little bit you know instead of slam door don't want to feel it you know so that little bit of self permission is what opens up the possibility of transformation so anyone can do that it takes some courage it might take some support as well from friends and people close to you um, or even professionals mm. but the kind of commitment to look at it is like it's gold dust because it starts the journey and then the and then the steps reveal themselves you know and the and the illumination start to come and then it starts to unwind you know, and open up and the intelligence of your heart begins to kind of come online and then it's about how you treat yourself you know it's like you're a child you're a wounded child we all are and and when your kind of child has collapsed in on themselves whether it's depression or, or whatever it is anxiety or something you know what how what do you do to that child you know you don't kind of ignore it you you go and you you kind of just touch it the, in the gentlest way and that's the spirit we have to use it with the art of contemplation and then we begin to open ourselves you know that's and that's the journey so yeah it's really powerful it's, but it could you know and anything you can apply it to anything i mean you you want to know what your last life was contemplate it contemplate 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 just go into it use your intuition use your imagination wrap yourself around it stay with it stay with it for weeks and months and something will happen tell you a synchronicity something will come and go bing and the moment you see it you will not be mistaken it's like your cells of your body will just go jing oh my god it's a memory come back to me so that's contemplation anything you want to know anything the answers are in there <laughs> it's so this is such a, an empowering um yeah. idea for all and really i have to say that has been so profound for me because um, first of all, it gives, it brings that power back into ourselves. We don't have to look for external sources of knowledge, but once no. you begin practicing the art of contemplation, it's not just, you don't just receive insights on the specific contemplations. You begin to become aware of this vast, infinite, um, space around you and how everything works with itself and your, the context of life becomes more apparent. And I mean, I feel so much more connected to to it i don't even know what it is to source since beginning contemplation because i will just spend so long with my eyes closed in the mornings i don't fill up all my time with different practices like i used to i just th i just think well, it's not even thinking it's it's contemplating yeah. and there are many ways as well that there are as many ways to, to uh, of contemplating as there are people so you get to be creative in finding what is the way that suits me best so in the back of the book for example are a whole load of techniques and examples of like contemplation through movement contemplation through nature contemplation through dance contemplation through preparing food contemplation through service contemplation through you know yeah i mean there are so many routes or there's the sitting contemplation or there's the running contemplation there's the swimming contemplation you know it's like uh, there's an endless yes. number of them where so for people who are really body oriented it's really beautiful um for people who are intellectual it's really it's also and and it combines the best is to combine them i mean my most powerful one is the sun i do the sunrise contemplation it's not for everyone um well actually it kind of is but <laughs> it takes some chi because you know what i call like chi because you've got to get up early um, yeah and Especially now. you know right right now it's like you got to be up at five <laughs> yeah. um and that's tough and <laughs> but once you started to do it um 
you meet the sunrise, you meet the sun as it comes over the horizon. Yes. It's so blissful. I mean, I've done it now for a few years and I don't do it every morning, but I do it, especially in this weather at the moment, like it's really, the sunrise is just stunning, you know? And, um, yeah. and everyone kind of, it just, the moment that first ray of light hits you, hits you here, it takes you on a journey. It's so powerful. It floods the whole of your DNA with this intelligence, this solar intelligence. So it's the deepest form of contemplation because you're contemplating light. And we are light. So you're contemplating your light. You know, but you're using this external <laughs> symbol as it rises, you know, incredibly powerful. And, and, and you get to love it so that, I mean, my body clock now just automatically yeah. wakes me up. Yes. Exactly. When I, I never, I've never set an alarm. I trust my body. I trust it. So if it doesn't wake me up, it's because it needs to lie in. Yeah. Yes. But mostly it'll wake me up and say come on this morning i woke up and i was like oh really because there's always that resistance like can i just like not bother today and then this little bird landed on my windowsill and just went tick, 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 tick. and i was like okay i'm coming I'm, uh, and do you have somewhere that you can face the sun as it comes over the horizon yeah i mean for me it's not i have to go up out <clears throat> in the village so i have to go out sneak out without waking anyone up go up the day up the road to a field so I have, I have a little kind of journey to get there which is perfect because it sort of prepares me yeah. um, and then I get there and there's this perfect vista for the sun so oh, anyway but you can contemplate the moon or the stars or trees or a dog or you know yeah. anything your body your physical body yeah. yeah I have found that sunrise contemplation to be a beautiful context for the first stage of the golden path discovering your purpose because it it does you just start to embody a knowledge about, you know, your, why you're here. And I wanted to expand on something you mentioned earlier about needing to really embody your purpose and then allowing your heart to open before we can arrive in the final stage of the golden path, which is the pearl sequence <clears throat> and releasing your prosperity into the world. Because um, you, I've, I've really been looking forward to talking about this with you. Um, you wrote this piece called the Pearl Articles, which my friends and I have come together many times to discuss. And there are some ideas that, that you discussed in there that are, have been really life-changing. And you've touched on it a little bit today, this idea of wealth versus prosperity, um, the simplicity and a new definition of philanthropy. And I wondered if we could talk a little bit more on that. Yeah. So, um, and also about fractal lineage and finding your people in this world. So specifically, the first thing that I read that really illuminated me was your definition of prosperity. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, well, the main thing about prosperity <clears throat> is a lovely word, prosperity, mm. and I prefer it to wealth. Um, and I even use them as, you know, opposite yeah. each other in a way so i see wealth as an accumulation of you know so it's like an accumulation of something and um and what that what if you if all you do is accumulate then you get heavier and your life gets heavier and you get more complicated it gets more complicated so the very wealthy people of the world have very complicated lives because they're managing all that wealth. And even though they have to pay people, they will pay other people to do all that work. It's like, it's still complicated because you're holding all that, that, right? And nature doesn't do that. Nature doesn't kind of hoard. Nature pro proliferates, but then disperses. And, the, and everyone else comes and takes of it, the birds or the whatever, they come and they share in it and they, and they recycle it. And so that's what prosperity is. Prosperity is the recycling. So like you actually want your life to be simpler. You know, to be prosperous is to have a simple life. Simple means you don't have worries. <laughs> simple means you don't have to do all this kind of additional work and kind of addictive like managing of, of, you know, of all that. It's like you want a flow that comes in, that comes out that is um, interactive, that is rich, that is through your heart. So, so 
true prosperity is across all your all areas of your life so wealth can be you can be very wealthy but you can have completely awful relationships mm -hmm. you know and cut off from your family or you could be you know very wealthy and have all kinds of other problems health problems or things all right so prosperity is across the whole of your life okay it, it can't be isolated to one area it's got to be in relationships health you know spirituality material plane at all levels that's what pro prosperity is it's a whole systems um flow it has more to do with flow actually um and as i said simplicity and and simplicity i don't mean like living like a peasant necessarily although for some people that is very prosperous and um i mean it's just not it's not complicated it don't, you don't have things to worry about because you're working in coordination with those you love you know usually in a group field and because prosperity is a group phenomenon it is a collective phenomenon so that final sequence of the golden path is all about the collective it's about collective pros prospering so we can't actually really prosper in isolation yeah. that's the difference between you can be wealthy and you can be the only wealthy person in a country and everyone else around is poor but to be prospering the whole nation has to prosper you could because you're sharing you know you're sharing together and you, and the original economies original far 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 back before we would even have memory were called gift economies yeah um, and because everyone was prospering so everyone was gifting and if everyone gifts and prospers then the whole it's, it's how the animal kingdom works actually you know the pod of dolphins works like that or a, a group of um you know wild dogs operate like that and where it's called communal altruism where one is happy to sacrifice itself for the whole now that doesn't mean we have to kind of sacrifice ourselves but it means you give of your service to the whole knowing that somewhere the whole will pay you back because you've given you know to the whole to the group um so that's sort of um some of the basic laws of prosperity is that kind of that selfless giving but the selfless giving has to come from an abundant heart like it can't come from a wounded heart and sometimes we do that sometimes we give because we we want to escape our suffering and that's that's a kind of codependent giving right it's very noble but it doesn't generate prosperity so we have to do the heart work so that we have the abundance of love and trust and then we create ripples in a, in the field around us because that was your other question is that you you draw together what i call your fractal mm. you know you you attract your true allies and it's and and they attract you because you're attracting a quality of open heartedness and trust because your heart will attract at the level of frequency that your heart is at so if you don't truly trust in people or you know or you still have uncovered issues you will draw the perfect partner to bring up that shadow pattern uh, after you get through the first phase of falling in love you know and then it emerges later you know um cuz because they're there to show you that they're help, there to help you work on that so once you've weeded out those weeds and you've got an open garden and I'm not, you don't have to be perfect but as you're it's a continual work um then the prosperity starts to arrive but it arrives through synchronicity it arrives through magic through miracles in extraordinary ways because as you said look we're all connected in a invisible way through invisible kind of dharma threads so yeah Oh. That was a long answer to <laughs> what is prosperity. <laughs> but there's, a, oh. there's so much to it. And in my life's work sphere, I have the 27th gene key, which is exactly what we're talking about. Shadow of selfishness, the gift of altruism. And I, some, I would even go so far as to say I've spent the last year really contemplating just that. Because even though I've moved into the Venus sequence now, the further I get, the more I realize I, I want to return back to that, to the beginning. Mm. And every time I return back, more and more unfolds. And it's really embodying that um, 
communal altruism that you spoke of that has completely unlocked i would say or prosperity has already it's it's i've recognized the prosperity i already had which you definitely talk about and it and it's this idea of unlocking healthy currents within your body when you really give of a pure heart and then as as you say the venus sequence and opening your heart and really tapping into that pure frequency and allowing your heart to dictate the words that come from your mouth and and it's just all this beautiful symbiotic process and then that really is how you attract your core fractal and and the right brand that you and and you say in the pearl articles that if you find that you've just not been successful in inverted commas yet that there's a reason it'll be because you haven't found your core fractal because you haven't been really tapped into your true heart frequency and your brand is not aligned with who you really are hmm. and your purpose so it's just such a beautiful sometimes i even do see it as linear as you need to keep going back so that you can come forward again it's yeah so keep unlocking i mean the generosity like that's obviously what your gene key is about but that we can use it as we can use you as an example for all human beings as you can do that with anyone mm -hmm. um so in every gene key every is a virtue that is of because we contain all of them you know obviously at some level so so generosity begins with being generous to yourself and if you can't be generous to yourself you can't attract the the generosity you know in the world so that's the first thing is to con you know and being generous to yourself is a great contemplation how do you do that what does that mean it means like when you feel closed down or contracted that's when you need the generosity the most because that's when we're hardest on ourselves we're like oh i must work harder i closed down i need to work work through this and and that, that's not generous that kind of attitude generosity is like it's okay your heart's contracted it'll it'll pass just i'm just going to give you a cup of cocoa and a thing and a nice cookie we can sit over here we don't have to do anything there's no pressure on you you're going to come back in your own time it's okay you know that's how you treat yourself you know with that level of compassion if, you, if we can do that all the time as much as possible we begin to then we bring our heart back to life and the more we do that then that generosity starts to radiate mm. and people feel that you know they, they really feel it they feel like someone who's generous to themselves yeah that's such a good and it means that. also generous to yourself means also you you know how to stop you know how to pause you know <laughs> my wife always like giving me a hard time because i'm especially in the sunny weather i'm lying in the hammock a lot you know she's, i'm going out there i'm just going to do a bit of hammock time <laughs> and uh, she's like get you know because she's a doer and I, like <laughs> she's like what are you doing get there's all these things need doing i'm like yeah i know but <laughs> I just can't away. I just can't resist like those because I my, I need it my body needs it my mind needs it my emotions need it we all need it and and obviously not to excess <laughs> but like you have to find a balance with with these things but um yeah being kind to yourself is like such a key such a key and then recognizing that being part of a collective and giving to that collective is the most beautiful rewarding feeling of and the most abundant feeling of all time and it's so applicable now because we're in a time of the rise of the the entrepreneur almost and so many of us i guess we're stuck in this wheel of samsara this pressure to evolve and we mistake that for being a personal individual struggle how can i make it i have to be more i have to make money i have to stand it out alone and we forget that actually by joining hands and really working in partnerships um that's how we all thrive absolutely and it's so important now because because as you say because we're make we're in the process of making a transition humanity um from being an individuated kind of creature to being a collective yeah. being and that's why a lot of our old tribal patterns are falling apart now they're beginning to fall apart and decline which is frightening for people right 
Um, but what's left is like this, you know, what the is this core stability that we can develop through contacting our heart, our, the love inside us, that that we can trust ourselves. And once we can trust yourself, and be on it, be gentle with yourself, then you kind of begin to open up to others. And you know what I say to people, especially now, um, because a lot of people are probably going to lose their jobs in the times ahead if they haven't already got jobs. And so that's very frightening, you know, because of the, the you know, the huge change in the economy that's probably coming. Mm. Um, is I would say, like, really work out for your, in your heart who are your true allies in life. Who do you deeply trust? You know, in a way that you could trust them with anything. And those are the people to talk to, and those are the people to possibly um, have kind of business partnerships with or share you know open up ideas creative ideas um and even if you've only got one that you start with that one um and you just begin a conversation or a dialogue and share um, because if you feel it with them they must feel it with you and that's the beginning of like okay let's see where we where this might lead and it might lead to all kinds of things but the, cultivating those deep kind of trust friendships is really really key because they, they're telling you that those are those people are part of your fractal you know part of your your soul group and and therefore you you know you don't want to be wasting your energy with places where that isn't the case you know so, and that's what a lot of us do we compromise we think i've got a great opportunity over there being offered a great opportunity with this person um but there isn't that that kind of resonance and but the temptation is oh but this is going to lead to oh amazing things and they have so much money or whatever it is, you know or potential contacts or like oh they're famous or whatever it is but if you don't have that recognition that is never going to i mean it, you'll learn and and if you're going to do it then do it but learn yeah. you know from it and it, and it'll teach you like damn i really wish you wish i, I, I could have listened to my intuition i knew that they were going to betray me or whatever it's like you know i knew it was going to collapse because our intuition knows so we can save ourselves a huge amount of time by not getting involved in things that truly don't feel right with people where we don't have that deep soul contact um you know that's that's also fundamental that but that's part of the venus work that clears your heart so that you know who your allies are if you're really listening to your heart, then you know who your allies are. There's no mistake in it. And the other thing is it's, it's deeply enjoyable to work with those people. You know, because you just have a resonance and then more come, you know, because they feel the resonance. It's uh, like bees to the to the kind of honey that's that's in there. And that's, again, prosperity because we're a collective being. So this is. You know, I was said in the early days of doing Gene Keys that um, it's about the, the coming together of genius. You know, so we develop our individual genius and then we join our genius with those. And, you know, and, a, and a group of geniuses together, that's not something that the world has really seen. We've only had an isolated genius. But group of genius, that's like, that's like a, a kind of super brain. That's a like that's a super cell, you know? Do you know what I mean? Yes. That's like, whoa, the power of like those different geniuses network together through the heart and through clarity of mind and intent and service to the whole, that is going to generate awesome prosperity. You know? And it has to be philanthropic. You know, that was your other question. Yes. You don't even need to do this interview. <laughs> <laughs> i'll just log out <laughs> no i needed your 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 lovely aura here to kind of trigger me um yeah so philanthropy is 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 at the core it has to be the core of of prosperity and when i say philanthropy i kind of distinguish it a little bit from charity um and charity is charity is very noble and beautiful and it's it's about um giving uh giving resources or money or kindness in order to help some someone or something less fortunate 
right? And, but and that's charity, and that's what it is. Philanthropy is slightly different because it's um, it's more about investing, where you invest your energy. So it's a bit more careful. So it may not, like it, I always I use this kind of um, story where you know you you might walk past a homeless person and they ask you for money. And um, if you're a charitable person, you might give them the money and just, you know, have a wonderful moment where you've given them the money and then they shine, they shine and they're like, oh, thank you so much. You know? But you don't know where they're going to spend that money um, or how it's going to work or whether it will make their life any better or not. But for that moment, it was enough, actually, because you, you made their life better and they made your life better because there was a connection. So that in it serves itself. But the philanthropy would look at that person and go well I'm not going to give my money to them right now but I'm really going to consider how I can help not just one homeless people but all homeless people and I'm going to put my energy into that vision you know um, and right now I'm not going to help that person but consciously I'm choosing that not because I and you might as well you might be both you might give them a little bit and then say I'm going to go and you know because you can be charitable and philanthropic <laughs> um, which is you know, the best. <laughs> um, but you would really invest your whole life in being of service to the whole in some way. That means that everything that you do in your business, at the core of it needs to be this, I want, we want this to be in service of the whole in the highest way possible. Um, and if you put that at the core of your business, then you've got a really, really powerful seed, you know, and not all businesses have that a lot of businesses kind of bolt it on afterwards yeah. you know and but if you have that at the core it's a really pure seed you know and it will it will grow it will sprout well you said in the articles that just by having that genuine intention catalyzes i've used that word like a hundred times today but i can't think of a better word catalyzes those healthy currents and it sets off the process by which you know you start the universe will place things in your hands um and it just sets off that process and and then it's a, a real uh you start to cultivate more and more trust when you see these things appearing in your life so quickly if you really come from that genuine place and and that's why i do urge people to to dive into the gene keys because it gives you so much specific um you can go into your specifics of when you mentioned the beggar you know, are you somebody who will give the money? Are you somebody who will walk past, get home and then come up with a whole new system? We all have our different ways that we, we all have different genius that we can mm. bring into the world. And we do need to explore what those are so that we can embody them and work together all embodying our different gifts. That's true synergy, isn't it? Mm. So that's yeah. been really amazing to dive in, look at the pearl sequence and see, oh, this is, this is how I, what I should focus on. And mm. I, it doesn't matter that I'm not naturally drawn to this or this or this. Yeah. Here is where I can shine. Exactly. And there's those two, six lovely um, patterns of prosperity in the pearl, um, which are like, you know, they give you a sort of clue and an inkling as to, well, what does prosperity really look like for me? Do you know what, what yours is? What your Fifth. line is? Five. Fifth. Okay. So you have one, which is simplicity. So if you're a first line there, then you're the kind of person that actually really will love your, your your version of prosperity will be pure simplicity you know a simple life can be exquisite in all kinds of areas but it's like you just don't want things to be complicated um second line would be like uh, recognition so for you it's all about relationships so your pros if you were a second line your prosperity would be like you know just really deep love in some form with like being with the one you love or being in with like deep friendships you know or, or being deeply recognized by everyone in your life and not really having anyone that doesn't recognize you that would be like second line prosperity third line prosperity is is about um celebration you know so and and the pearl is right at the end of your golden path right it's the very last sphere of the golden path so it's like everything leads there but it's not something you make happen it's mm. something that flowers or dawns or it's, a, it's like your harvest so it just happens so if you're a third line pearl then 
probably you'll get quite a lot of money <laughs> because you're into celebration, right? So uh, to celebrate, you might, you know, quite a lot of resources will come your way because you're going to want to share them. You're going to want to share joy and laughter and dance. And, you, you know, that's going to be, and that's going to be your purpose of prosperity is like to share with others that celebration. And if you're a fourth line, it's charity. I'm a fourth line, so it's charity. It's like your deepest wish is to help certain people, you know, or certain groups of people. And you just want to do it. It's kind of in, it's almost a little bit selfish because you just want to see their faces and you want to have this, you just want to give it, give the money and then go and like go, it's yours. Okay, <laughs> do what you want. Here you are. Um, that's the fourth line. Fifth line is about power and like um, sort of, it's like, leadership in a way so it's being given responsibility in a way um and so you it, it's like others it's it's generosity really is what it is it's like it's being able to kind of share a a global you know idea that reaches and impacts many people you know that uh, that's going to be your prosperity reward is to is to see other people being prosperous essentially that's what it is to to sow abundance around the world you know that's the that's the fifth line does that resonate yes i love <laughs> yeah. that yeah <laughs> and the sixth line is is um kind of it's a bit like the first line but at another level it's you know it's about um it's almost like I was joking, it's almost like the queen who doesn't handle money, you know, <laughs> like, it's like, I don't actually have anything to do with money. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, because it, I just, it, it, it's dealt with by everyone around me, but I'm just in this place where it's like, it, it comes and it goes and it's not something that I need to even think about. Um, so it's like, it, the six lines are the ones that are kind of here to bring an end to money actually they hold the vision of like do we really need this stuff <laughs> actually they're the ones that are like the gift economy yeah. like they have the vision of like if we all actually just do this it, we won't even need to have this stuff you know so they're holding that highest vision and and those six you know those six lines are kind of just crystallizations of in our lives of like what what prosperity really means and where it's going you know ultimately is taking us to a world where money is no longer needed but that may be some time away you know because our civilizations will have to collapse <laughs> you know in order for that to happen because I, I just don't see any other way i mean i, I don't uh, you know. and sometimes that has to be that way when a new paradigm emerges the old one has to kind of crumble and the new one emerges as it's crumbling yeah. absolutely well that's a beautiful way for me to introduce. There's a meditation that you released very recently. If you go into Google and type in, and I'll link this in the show notes, resources for turbulent times, you've created the most beautiful meditation, um, which kind of takes us on a journey around the rebirth of this planet. So that would be a very comforting thing for people to listen to at this time when they contemplate what is going on around us and to channel that sixth line energy. Mm. to hold a vision and absolutely just to know it's a i did that meditation just to kind of let people know where we're heading because i think it's important that people know where we're going so that you have a perspective as things you know become a bit more chaotic um and i'll be doing more of that i'm planning to to, to create more resources about where we're heading please you know? do yeah Please do. It would be so deeply comforting for all of us. And yeah. the 55th Gene Key has been a source yeah. of real comfort. So yeah. I, yeah. Urge people to visit the website and look at all the resources you've created. Yeah, we've got a nice little course coming on the 55th Gene Key towards the end of this year, like a little very simple um, course that's going to come out that will be very accessible for people so that they can interact with that future vision of what's mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. Because it's important to identify with the future kind of flowering so that we have that, so that, and that doesn't take us away from being in the now at all, 
but it's it's like remembering where the seed is to is, is going to take us because every human being alive knows sorry my daughter's making a funny face <laughs> <laughs> every every um where was i person alive <laughs> has inside their cells the certainty of what we're actually moving towards but it takes a little bit of reminding sometimes yes. for us to remember yeah yeah it's, it's very comforting that's why jinkies we use the symbol of the dragonfly you know because it it's three stages show us you know where we're going we're going to a you know an amazing state but it's it's going to be a journey to get there so i, I you know I, I i kind of also want people to know that i, I want people yeah. to know both like to be realistic it's like there's going to be some intensity you know and a, and a lot of fear and at the end of it is this incredible flowering like unbelievable like something you can't even possibly right now imagine or maybe you can if you're very imaginative but <laughs> so the two go together like it's a wormhole we're going into do you think we'll see any evidence of that beginning of the flowering in our lifetime sure definitely definitely i mean i i i think it, i always feel like the divine sort of intelligence is not mean you know mm. you know it and and i feel like personally it wouldn't place me here with all of this and then kind of have me leave before i experience some of it i feel like that would be like oh that's just cruel <laughs> <What? you know? laughs> yeah. um and and but that so that's my personal thing but also um yeah it's i think it's you know my sense is it's going to happen at a dizzying pace um and so we're laying the foundation of what's to come but also the other thing i'd say is you know we have to get out of this thinking that we're not going to be here yeah <laughs> you know yeah because the reality is we're going to be here because even when we've finished with this life we're going to return but we're going to return to a world that's very different and i know it's very in vogue to say oh this is my last incarnation um <laughs> and i can pretty much guarantee that that isn't the truth you know whoever uh, you know it, if it is the truth then good for you and you know you you must be having an awesome ecstatic life you know for that to be the case um, with where you've transcended all your suffering and, and fantastic like please come so I can sit at your feet <laughs> <laughs> sorry I'm being a bit <laughs> naughty I'm so but I'm serious like yeah. there's you know we we have to be not too spiritually uh, kind of arrogant and um, realize that we are a part of a rolling consciousness that keeps returning and keeps refining itself and we don't want to miss the next phase actually i've been even saying to people like okay well if that were true and you've been here for you know thousands hundreds of thousands of lives and then and then you're like being all this yeah. process and then you get to the party and you're like you're gonna leave <laughs> just before it begins like are you sure and then I, they're like, I you, right yeah <laughs> you want to see like this beauty that's coming and uh yeah so the 55 teach you know it shows us that that gene key that there's a new kind of mutation of the of the human vehicle coming um and that it's literally like getting a new car you know a new kind of car that runs on a different fuel that has a different awareness system that is networked in from the beginning that doesn't contain the same suffering codes you know that is a vehicle you want to be in I would say. <laughs> now that's a girl that I want. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's worth that's worth paying for. <laughs> You're so right. I no, I'm I'm excited to see what that would look like. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, we could we could do a whole other episode on the fifty fifth jinky. Maybe one day. Yeah. Very happy to. Oh, thank you. Well, this was just so much fun as well as so interesting. I really enjoyed it. Um, 
I love your sense of humor that you always bring into your videos. Thank you. And, um, and so for people to find out more about, should they go to your website and they can see all the things you're brewing? Yeah, the website genekeys.com, that video that you sent that you were talking about, that audio. Um, and, um, and I guess my YouTube channel is like yes. filled with stuff. Really and um, and I said, we send out a, um, a, a thing called the Pulse every week or so, mm -hmm. um, which is tuned into the current um, planetary energies every mm -hmm. six days it shifts. So if you get on our mailing list, um, you'll get that. And, it's and, and every, you know, so it puts out my latest video that I've, because I'm recording a lot of videos mm. and then some inspiring article and maybe a piece of news. Um, so that's a good way to stay in touch. That and YouTube and um, yeah, just go and get your profile on the website and check out the golden path and explore it. Mm. And there's a huge amount of free material there. A huge so, amount, yeah. Yeah lots to dive into well thank yeah. you so much richard thanks ellie lovely to meet you yeah really lovely to meet you yeah. and um, can't wait to see what's coming up yeah